Good morning, Year 9. Welcome to another history class. And today, we're going to continue with the same topic as the previous week. So we're going to continue with the topic of World War II. And your key question is, what were the opening events of World War II? So we're going to look really the first year, the opening year of the war. Um, for your starter, I want you to answer two questions that are going to relate directly to what we're studying today. So thinking back to World War I, what was the fighting like in World War I? So how did the army set up? How did they fight battles in World War I? And how long did it take for Germany to invade and defeat France in World War I? So pause the video, have a go at these two questions. Okay, perfect. So let's uh, take a quick look at these answers. What was the fighting like in World War I? We should remember it was trenches. So very static, the armies would dig in and there wasn't really much movement. They fought along the same fields for four years, really. And how long did it take for Germany to invade and defeat France? They couldn't. So four years of fighting, and there was no um, defeat for France. They managed to hold out for four years. Now, it's going to be interesting when we compare to World War II. So let's move on. We've been looking at appeasement, so you should all have a knowledge of this already and we've looked at the reasons for it. We know that appeasement was popular especially in Britain because people thought Versailles was too harsh on Germany so they thought Germany was just taking territory that really belonged to them and more than anything they wanted to avoid another great war okay and here we can see Neville Chamberlain and Adolf Hitler meeting in Munich and here's a newspaper front cover showing Neville Chamberlain as the man the world looks to. So they really wanted to avoid this Second World War. And here we can see some of the gains. So we can see Germany here, and we can see also some of the gains that have been taken by Germany. So without opposition, he began to expand. Austria was taken in the Anschluss, so they voted. Remember, we said they voted, but inverted comma because. We had the Nazi uh, thugs on the street influencing the vote. So they joined with Austria and afterwards they wanted this Sudetenland. So this area here where I've got the arrow, that was to join and become part of Germany. So we know that Neville Chamberlain, he met with Hitler at Munich in one last attempt to make peace. And they agreed that Germany could take part of Czechoslovakia in exchange for Germany's promise. And here he is holding the paper, promising peace in our time. However, we, the world was soon about to find out that Hitler's word was worthless and we were gonna end up with a second war. So let's take a look at how this happened. So what happened after the Munich conference? Germany invaded Poland, okay? So Germany invades Poland after the Munich conference. How do the other European powers react? 1939, France and Britain declare war on Poland, okay? And that is the beginning of World War II. So after all of the appeasement, after all of the attempts to avoid the Second World War, Germany's invasion of Poland starts the Second War. And here on the map, we can see the next, within the next three years, or two and a half years actually, the, the German advancements, where they attack and where they try to conquer in Europe. So they stretch all the way from the border of Spain to Moscow, Norway, all the way down south to Greece and France. And you can't see on the map, it goes all the way to Egypt, North Africa, Libya, all of these places are under German attack. So, guys, we're going to go through some of the uh, early victories of Germany. So what it will be worth doing is, after each one, please pause and make a note of them in your book. So, Poland. Poland had a very modern army. It had one of the strongest armies in Europe at the time. And take a think, how long do you think Poland was able to stand up to Nazi Germany? One month. So even with its strong army, Poland lasted only one month against the Nazis. Next on the list, 
was Denmark. Again, Denmark, reasonably strong army. Maybe they could put up a good fight. No, they resisted for one day against the Nazis before they surrendered. So now we're seeing Germany. They've got Poland, they've got Denmark under control. Next on their list, Holland, their neighbor. Again, another moderately powered European country. Would they be able to stand up to the Nazis? Five days. So within five days, Germany had taken control of Holland. Next, there was Belgium. Belgium, which had been invaded by Germany in World War I, had been conquered, shared a border with France. So again, an important strategic location. How long could Belgium stand? Two weeks. So we're seeing another country now, Norway. Again, this will be strategically north. It's close to Britain. How long does Norway last? They can do it last two months. And then finally, oops, we have France. So France, who had lasted four years against the Nazis, this time, sorry, four years against Germany in World War I, this time they can last only six weeks. So it takes Germany upon their attack of France, France can last six weeks before they are totally controlled. And here we can see this is a French man on the streets of France crying as the German tanks move in. So again, anyone who's been to Paris, the Champs-Élysées of the Triumph with Nazi soldiers. And here is Hitler and some other Nazis posing in front of the Eiffel Tower. So what does this leave for Europe? Taking a look at this map, here we can see the red. This is Russia, so Soviet Union territory. The green, so here and down here. This is British or free France. The rest of the map, everything that is a shade of gray, this is controlled by Germany. So this is German controlled territory. And we're gonna be looking next class at a great escape because the British army was totally trapped in France after this invasion. So we're gonna look at how the British army managed to escape and also the German attempts to invade Britain. But for today, I want you to think about this idea. How did they have so much quick success? So the reason they had success was due to different tactics to the previous war. Whereas in the previous war they had trenches, the Germans used a tactic called Blitzkrieg. And this came in four points and it enabled them to have the quick victories. First, they used airstrikes. They would send the planes and they would eliminate strategic points. They would bomb the army in front of them and eliminate uh, key, key bridges and really just create chaos. The next, once the planes had dropped their bombs, they would send their soldiers in. And again, this would be to swarm the enemy. So once the bombs had done damage, the soldiers could go in, they could fight the enemy. And behind the soldiers, they would send tanks. So they would have tanks behind the soldiers. And the combination of these three things would create gaps in the enemy's lines. So trenches were no longer uh, useful because the holes would be created in the trench and that would allow the Germans to enter and they would be able to surround the enemy and quickly win. So again, I want you to just try and do a quick definition of Blitzkrieg and state how it was different to the trenches. So rather than the static warfare, you had uh, a quicker, a more mobile attack using modern technology. So your final task for today. I've included here four sources, okay? And these are gonna give you more information about Blitzkrieg. So underneath, I would like you um, to look at this table here. And I would like you to please copy the table and complete it using the sources one, two, three, and four. So you're gonna say, what kind of source is it? Is it a letter? Is it a, uh, a photo? What does it tell us about Blitzkrieg? 
And are there any problems with the source? So is, is it reliable or is it not reliable and why? So I look forward to seeing what you produce. Thank you.